Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video I will share with you my review of the 122mm SV Boni SV550 telescope after two years of using it. Since then I've collected about 1000 hours of exposure time on different targets and I believe enough time has passed to form a good feedback about the telescope. So without further ado, let's dive into the video. The 122mm SV550 is an APO triplet diffractor that features a 3-element design lens with FPL51 glass. This glass is of lower quality compared to a FPL53 glass which most high-end telescopes use. However, it allows the Svibony to noticeably bring the price of the telescope down compared to similar aperture telescopes with higher quality glass. In practice, the difference between FPL51 and 53 is that FPL53 has a lower dispersion properties, meaning it bends light more effectively to align different wavelets better, resulting in sharper and more color accurate images. FPL51 is a steel solid ED glass that does a great job correcting colors and providing good results. And let's take a look at some sub-exposures that I got using the telescope. So right now we're looking at the picture of the Orion Nebula that I captured with a 2600 MC Pro camera with no filters used. This is 3 minute exposure that was taken like, I think it was 40 minutes or to an hour after the sunset. That's why we see pretty much more vignetting than I usually see on my images and I'll show different examples later. But what I want to say about chromatic aberrations of the telescope is that overall the image looks good, but if we zoom in on like some bright stars that you can see some tiny like these bluish aberrations ar around bright stars. And if you look at the unstretched image that you also can see the same situation here on like really bright stars. And guys, whether it's a lot or not a lot of aberrations, I'll let you decide. But I just want to show you how like raw images uh, look like. And once again, that's the three minute sub exposure. They also, you can see yep, some blue duration around really bright stars. And talking about the amount of vignetting that you get on APS-C size camera, here's an example of a single sub-exposure of M94 Galaxy taken with a red filter, three minutes worth of exposure time. And uh, yep, that's pretty much all the vignetting that you see in the corners. And if I think if I zoom out the image, then you can see this vignetting more obvious. So yeah, I hope it's gonna give you an idea of how much vignetting you might get when using an APS-C size camera. And of course, if you're using a smaller size cameras like 585, 533, 294, etc., then you possibly will not see any vignetting whatsoever, which is good. And on the full frame cameras, there will be much more vignetting, of course. But as I said, I haven't tried a full frame camera with this telescope, so I don't know exactly what kind of results can be achieved using it. Now let's take a look at 30 hours worth of integration time image. This is M94 Galaxy that I captured using a monochrome MX571 camera and RGB filters. So approximately we have their 10 hours worth of exposure time per each channel. Uh, the image is not processed and as you can see it's not stretched. I just applied some auto stretch and uh, I just want to show you some like bright stars on this image. As you can see the situation is much better when using monochrome camera because pretty much you focus in each channel individually and the situation with aberrations looks much better now. The only thing all the stars they beat of like reddish now and uh, that's not because of the telescope but because of the filter that I was using. Uh, these were Scorpio RGB filters and uh, I was using like a sample kit so red filter was not ideal. I think it still can give you an idea of what to expect using the telescope and the monochrome camera. And finally what I want to show you, it's actually not finally, but here's an example of uh, 27 hours worth of exposure time using narrowband filters. This is the M16 Nebula. And as you can see, like, of course, all the stars, they will be red because of the sulfur filter. And uh, this thing is easily corrected uh, in post-processing and uh, doesn't matter what telescope you use in narrowband, that's pretty much a common situation that you can see. But what I want to show you is how corners look like when using an APS-C size camera. And uh, in particular, as you can see, so here I got corners from my 30 hours worth of integration time image of M94, also non not processed in any way. And same here, M16. And stars in the corners, they look pretty, like, I think they look good, guys, right? What do you think? But this is APS-C size camera, and um, I don't have a full-frame camera to test this telescope with, so I have no idea how 
like the stars might look like with a full frame camera, but at least guys, you know that APS-C size camera or any camera with a smaller sensor will give you a really sharp stars around the corners. And um, yeah, I, like personally, I'm pretty happy with the results that I get on this telescope. Now let's talk about the elements of the telescope. The SV550 has a retractable dew shield, which is useful if you happen to be traveling a lot. In my case, I haven't been keeping it extended at all times. And I must say that the build quality is good here, and I haven't experienced the shield like sliding down or moving on its own during the night and for the past two years it's been solid, uh, which is great considering that I also have a flat panel attached over here and no issues whatsoever, so the build quality is good on that part. I like that the telescope rings are well made as well, and as we want it did a good job designing them. The top part of the rings is flat, which allows you to mount an additional plate and accessories to keep everything more organized. There are also thread holes so that you can secure the connection, and uh, the sides of the rings they also have threads as well, so there are plenty of options where you can install all the additional accessories that you need. The telescope itself came connected with a Wixen style dovetail that I pretty much switched right away to LS90 style dovetail, and um, this is what you would also want to do if you happen to plan doing deep sky photography with the telescope. If you use visual, then the Vixen style will be just fine, but for deep sky, I would switch to Los Monte plate right away. The focuser here is a 2.5 inch rack and pinion with a dual speed functionality. The focuser tube is well made and it has been solid since the first day of using it. I haven't had any issues with the focuser, like either sagging or slipping out of focus throughout the night, and even after two years of using the telescope and keeping it outside 24-7, it still works great. The focuser has an integrated rotator as well, which for me was actually one of the standout features back in the time, however, I must admit that I only used it just a few times at the beginning, and the main reason for that was is that uh, I would mostly do like long exposure time projects in a semi-remote location, so changing angles manually all the time would be simply time consuming. And what I did eventually is switch to a motorized rotator. Also I believe that SV Bonnie has a better made rotator called SV210 that is much smoother compared to the integrated one. So instead of using the integrated rotator, what I would do guys is probably get an SV210 like right away when purchasing SV550 and uh, if you don't feel like using a motorized rotator yet but you still want to use one, you still will be fine with using this integrated rotator, it's just what I'm saying is that SV210 slightly smoother in my opinion and easier to use. That's the first thing. And the second thing with this rotator is that in order to change the rotation you need to unscrew this screw and then you basically change the rotation of uh, the focuser tube. What I did sometimes by accident is I was unscrewing this part of the telescope and this is something that you kind of want to avoid doing. Uh, well, it's nothing goes wrong with it, but still you might kind of unscrew this part by accident, you don't notice it and then you have potential issues. On the top part of the focuser in two places you can install this mounting shoe. The telescope itself comes with one, but as you can see I took it off as uh, all of my accessories they kind of placed on top of the telescope itself, which I believe is much better in terms of the cable management organization, in terms of balancing as well. Everything kind of centered towards the telescope tube. But if you happen to like using these mounting shoes that you can install your guide scope on one side and uh, let's say Stella Vita or ZWO ASI Air on the other side. So the internal part of the focuser has light baffles and uh, the telescope itself has light baffles as well. Now, I know that Ben from the Narrowband channel mentioned that the baffles of his OTA SV550 went off the original position which affected imaging. I haven't had this issue on my telescope, but this is still something that I want you to be aware of. Now let's talk about the reducer made specifically for the SV550 and here I got a 0.x SV209 reducer slash flattener. The reducer threads directly into the focuser of the telescope and it has an M63 thread. At the back it comes with an M63 to M48 adapter and the following is really important to note. The reducer requires 55mm of back focus and this distance is measured from the end of the adapter and not the reducer itself. So the adapter has 16.05mm of thickness and uh, this distance does not count towards 55mm. Let's talk about the mount that you want to use with this telescope. 
I believe that the solid choice is the AQ6R Pro mount or any different option that has a similar weight capacity. While I've seen some people use the SV550 on like HEQ5 Pro mount, I believe that this is not an ideal option and there is a good chance that you would struggle more with this configuration than if you like would switch to a more robust mount. Yes, the telescope itself doesn't weigh a lot, just like around 6.5 kilograms, but once you add more additional gear, then it all adds up in the weight, so the AQ6R Pro would be just like a solid choice for deep sky imaging. The last thing to note about the mount is that you would really want to get an extension pin to raise the mount head a bit so that like the telescope wouldn't hit the tripod legs when getting closer to the meridian flip part. And I added mine a few months later, I had started using the SV550 and it was a really good like choice to do that, that allowed me to collect uh, like additional 30 minutes of exposure time per imaging session. What about guiding with this telescope? I've used three different guiding solutions. So I started with SV Boeing SV 165 guide scope and my first images were taken using it. Overall it was doing the job just fine, but I wasn't able to properly align the field of view of the guide scope and the telescope just because of the construction of SV165. You can only uh, change the rotation of the field of view, but you cannot actually change the alignment of the guide scope. So later I switched to a 50 millimeter guide scope from Orion and uh, basically I would use this guide solution up until the beginning of this year but later on I switched to a off axis guider. The 50 millimeter guide scope was doing a perfect job and I would easily get like five minutes up exposures with sharp stars. However, it wasn't that good when I started taking 600 or 900 second exposures for narrowband imaging. Once I switched to the OEG, I fully resolved all my guiding issues when taking that long exposures and I have a more detailed video about off-axis guiding that you can check out by following this link in the corner. Meanwhile, a regular telescope will do just fine if you're planning to take either like 5 minute sub exposures or shorter. Talking about imaging experience, I can only say that I've been enjoying the telescope for the past two years. I would use it with a color camera for the first year. In my second year, I would be switching between doing images using a color camera and a monochrome camera with an IMAX 533 sensor. And since the beginning of this year, I switched to a monochrome IMAX 571 sensor. Also, I wanted to briefly look if there are any alternatives to a C550 telescope. And based on specs and the price tag ratio, I believe that the closest competitor to a C550 telescope would be this one. 120 millimeter ASCAR telescope, which is also a triplet APA refractor. Um, I believe that it, the telescope has exactly the same FPL 51 lens, and overall, the specs between these two telescopes they're really close to each other. Yes, SV Boni has two millimeters more in aperture, but I think it's kind of we can consider these two telescopes as exactly the same in terms of aperture. But what the ASCAR telescope is better with, in my opinion, is that. It has a 3.3 inch focuser, which is much bigger compared to two and a half inch focuser on a SV550 telescope. That basically means that you can use a full frame camera sensor with ASCAR telescope, while you can technically still also use a full frame cameras with a SV550, I believe, but you'll really need to take a good flat frames in order to calibrate light frames properly. And uh, this is something that you might want to consider. But if you have any different sensor like IMX 533, 294 cameras or APS-C size camera like I have, then you can easily take images with SV Boini telescope and uh, pretty much be happy. And in terms of the price, SV Boini is slightly lower in price compared to Oscar. Oscar rates at 1700 US dollars before tax and SV Boini, I believe, should be somewhere around 1500 dollars. Finally, let's talk about whom this telescope is designed for. I don't think this is going to be your first telescope because it's naturally harder to deal with big telescopes at the beginning of astrophotography. The 122mm SV550 is likely a step up telescope for deep sky astrophotographers that want to see more resolution in their images while also maintaining a good field of view. You can capture a huge variety of different targets throughout the year and get really nice images of galaxies, star clusters and nebulae of course. The potential of the telescope is well uncovered when you collect many hours of exposure time per target and I'm really happy with some of my latest projects that I've completed with it. So if you also guys want to look out of the telescope with similar specs and want to keep things on budget, then 122mm SV550 could be your choice. 
at least I've been happily using mine since the beginning and uh, I had no issues with the telescope. Alright guys, so I believe this is everything I wanted to cover about the telescope in the video. I hope this review was useful to you and it helped you on the way to get a bigger telescope. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I also want to encourage you to watch uh, my first two videos about the telescope where I basically show the setup process and share some of my tips about it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video till the end. I really hope to see you at the next one. And until next time, clear skies guys.